Welcome to the Sea Doo Life. Congrats on taking ownership of a switch, the pontoon with the heart of a Sea Doo. We know you can't wait to get out on the water. We get it. Before you cast the dock lines, let's go over the details on how to do things the right way and cover the safety information. This is really important, so please listen carefully. Give us a few minutes of your attention. This information will help you make the most of your time on the water and to make sure you, your friends, and your family enjoy safe fun on your new switch. I'm Tim, and I'm with Connie and the rest of the family whom are the proud new owners of a switch pontoon. We're pretty excited. We just want to make sure we're doing everything right. Boating safety is definitely important to me. Perfect. This video contains a lot of important safety information. Take the time to review this carefully before venturing out on your switch. Failure to do so could result in serious injury or death. Let's start with talking about operator's requirements. I say always read the instructions first. We'll definitely keep the operator's guide on the pontoon where it's handy. Sitting at the helm is the perfect place to reference the guidebook and see the location of the controls and understand how they work at the same time. You'll need to know where they are and how to use them. Before each ride, the driver and passengers should read and understand the respective safety labels to remind themselves of important safety tips. BRP recommends a minimum operator age of 16 years old. Nope, you're not driving yet. BRP suggests that you and other operators of your pontoon take an approved boating safety course. These courses are available online and through your local marine enforcement agencies. Obey applicable navigation rules and boating laws. And practice makes perfect, right? Absolutely. Before heading out for the first trip, you should practice in a controlled, low-risk environment so that you can become familiar with your pontoon's behavior by doing the practice exercises shown in the guide. And be sure to avoid anything that impairs your ability to drive, including drugs, fatigue, and alcohol. Drinking and driving do not mix. Just don't do it. So what do we need to know before we splash our new switch? This is a good time to go over the pre-ride inspection. It's really important that you inspect your pontoon before each ride to ensure that your boat is in good working condition. Refer to the pre-ride inspection subsection of the operator's guide. Conduct regular inspections of the entire fuel system. If you're trailering your switch to and from different bodies of water, wash the outside of the hull before launching to ensure you don't contaminate the waters with any possible invasive species. Get to know the details of the pre-ride inspection section in the operator's guide. I'm sure this inspection helps find any issues before they happen. Exactly. This inspection monitors wear and tear before problems start. Your inspection should be a regular part of your preparation routine, just like checking the weather forecast. Correct any problems that you find, and if needed, see an authorized CD dealer. We want to be comfortable on the water and also want to make sure we have the right gear. So what do we really need? Okay, let's go over what gear you really do need. Safe boating requires having the right gear. Protective gear keeps you safe and keeps you comfortable during the ride. Recommended protective gear for the driver and passengers include the following. Each person on board should have a properly fitting and approved personal flotation device, or PFD. And each person should know where they're stowed and how to use them. Many regulations require children to wear an appropriately sized PFD when the boat is underway. Check your local laws for specific information. How about eyewear? Glasses, no glasses? A good pair of sunglasses is recommended as they protect your eyes from the sun and any flying objects. Have you ever been hit by a dragonfly at 40 miles an hour? Ugh. I recommend polarized glasses as they reduce the glare on the water and glasses that float. On long days, it's a good idea to carry warm clothing and rain gear as you never know how fast conditions can change. What are some of the other must-haves? An approved and fully charged fire extinguisher is mandatory. It should be located under the driver's seat. Also consider a small tool kit, local map, first aid kit, a tow rope, signaling device like flares, a paddle, emergency phone numbers, an anchor and mooring lines. Yes, it's a handful of items and you'll be glad you have them when you need them. 
Pre-ride inspection, check. Having the right gear, check. We're almost ready to go. Before starting the engine, check the engine compartment for gas leaks or vapor. I should vent the engine compartment before starting, right? And how long do I leave the blower on for? For at least four minutes. And while you're doing that, lock the driver's seat in the forward position and make sure it doesn't swivel. Ensure that all passengers sit down on a seat located and secured at the recommended locations marked with an X, as shown on the underway seating position label. Reposition the seats if needed. Items like a table and post must be stored and make sure that each seat and accessories are latched and secured. A loose seat or accessory can injure someone. I'm not a fan of runaway boats. Where's the best place to attach the safety lanyard? Keep the safety lanyard connected at all times when driving a pontoon by attaching it to your wrist. If you come out of the seat or move too far from the helm, the lanyard will unattach and shut off the engine. And always remove the safety lanyard when leaving the pontoon. What instruction do I need to give the kids while we're moving and my friends who act like a kid? <laughs> Let's go over that. Don't carry more people than the maximum allowed on your pontoon. Refer to the maximum capacity label on the right side of the helm seat. To avoid overboard accidents, close the doors, raise the backrest, and make sure everyone is seated at one of the underway seating positions. That means nobody on the sun bench, rear platform, or other unsecure spots. Before starting, all passengers should be properly seated inside the gates and rails and remain seated while underway. I'm not that tall. What if I can't see everything in front of me? If your visibility from the helm is limited, especially if a passenger is seated in the front of the operator, you can raise the seat bolster or you might have to stand up to drive. It's important for all passengers to review the safety labels to ensure a safe ride for everyone. Each passenger must be able to grab the hand grip located in front of each seat or on the handrail. Same as the driver, all passengers must avoid anything that impairs their own abilities to ride safely, such as alcohol, drugs, and fatigue. An important note on carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide, or CO, exposure can cause brain damage or death. Engine exhaust contains odorless and colorless carbon monoxide gas. Carbon monoxide will be around the back of the boat when the engine is running. Signs of carbon monoxide poisoning include nausea, headache, dizziness, drowsiness, and lack of consciousness. Move to fresh air if anyone shows signs of poisoning. The switch has handlebar controls. That's different than other pontoons. Is turning different? It's easy. Let's go over the basics of driving and turning. During forward operation, turning the handlebars to the right steers the boat to the right. Turning the handlebars to the left steers the boat to the left. It's also important to understand that directional control is reduced when the throttle is released and lost when the engine is off. So never release the throttle when trying to steer away from an object. I need throttle to steer, correct? Correct. Reduce your speed before attempting sudden or sharp turns and always maintain safe speeds for water conditions and the environment. Before you make any sharp or sudden turns, instruct your passengers to firmly hold on to maintain balance. I love the idea of a pontoon boat with brakes. I love this feature. Being able to come to a stop when you want really elevates your level of control. Although most watercraft have no means of braking, as commonly referred to with on-land vehicles, the advanced technologies of the IBR system now allow us to offer SeaDoo models equipped with a braking system. With the pontoon boat carrying some forward speed, simply pull the IBR control lever located on the left handlebar. Similar to a bicycle brake lever, the more you pull in the IBR lever, the greater the deceleration force becomes. Within milliseconds, the braking mode will engage and generate a deceleration proportional to the exerted force on the IBR lever. Be careful to gradually actuate the IBR lever to adjust intensity of the braking force and simultaneously release the throttle lever. Similar to when making sharp turns, the driver must make sure passengers are properly seated and holding the hand grip located in front of each seat or by holding the handrail before braking. The brake feature of the IBR system is different than that of conventional braking systems found on most on-land vehicles. It can't prevent your boat from drifting due to current or wind. It has no braking effect when in reverse or drifting rearward. 
Also note that your engine must be running to be able to use the brake. With the throttles and the IBR all on the handlebars, it makes it very easy to go from forward to neutral to reverse. When operating in reverse, check that the path behind the boat is free of people or obstacles. Proceed slowly. Pulling the IBR lever all the way in and holding it in while the boat is almost stopped engages the reverse mode. To control the rearward speed, use the throttle lever to increase or decrease the engine RPM. To stop the rearward movement, release both the throttle and IBR levers. Once the IBR lever is released, the system defaults to the neutral thrust position until the throttle is reapplied and forward movement is re-engaged. Okay, are you good with the basic operations of the switch? Well, what's next? I want to know more about bringing more friends and the proper way to do water sports. Okay, well, let's cover that. Keep in mind the boat handling, stability, and braking distance are affected when loaded with cargo and passengers. So correct loading and weight distribution is important. Don't overload the boat and ensure that the weight is properly and evenly distributed. Refer to the maximum capacities label on the right side of the helm seat. Tow sports like water skiing, wakeboarding, and towing inflatable tubes are some of the more popular water sports. They require a bit of training and know-how, and it's important to observe towing speed maximums on accessories. Do I need a spotter to tow, or is the mirror okay? Before your first tow session, check local and state regulations regarding tow sports, as different municipalities have different rules. Regardless of local rules, we recommend that any time you do tow sports with your pontoon, that you have a spotter as the driver can't always maneuver the boat and watch the person being towed at the same time. When you're close to other boats, make sure they see your rope and what and who you're towing and always be ready to react if they don't. Also avoid towing in congested areas and never tow in a marked channel. When the individual being towed falls, keep them in view, staying a safe distance away. Circle slowly to get the tow rope to them. Do not pull the tow rope in front of other boats and be careful not to run over the rope with the pontoon because it could get trapped in the jet pump. The best part of being on the water is getting in the water. For sure, that's part of the fun. There's things to do in the water when you're around the boat and there's things not to do in the water when you're around the boat. Don't apply throttle when anyone is at the rear of the boat. Stay away from the jet pump as it could pick up debris and thrust it rearward. Keep hair and clothing away from the intake grate under the boat while the engine is running to avoid entanglement and drowning. Before reboarding, be sure that the engine is off. Never use the ladder when the engine is running. Extend the ladder and carefully climb up, keeping your fingers clear of the pinch points. Never use the ladder for jumping, diving, or boarding while the pontoon's out of the water. A boating safety course is a must for the whole family, along with understanding water conditions. Yeah, that's super important because the terrain is always changing. It's really important to understand the conditions. Avoid shallow water in areas with submerged objects like stumps, rocks, and when heavy vegetation is present. Never jump waves or the wake of another vessel or attempt to spray or splash others while driving. Use common sense and courtesy. Drive defensively at safe speed and keep a safe distance away from people, objects, and other vessels. Do not follow directly behind other vessels. Weather can make or break your day on the water. Check the weather forecast before departing the dock. Weather can change quickly, causing all kinds of hazardous situations. Plan your fun appropriately, and if you see weather conditions changing for the worse, be smart and head back in. That was a good overview of the important safety information that we need to know before heading out. The fun is only starting aboard your sea doo Switch. For more safety or training information, visit your sea doo dealership or sea doo.com. We'll see you on the water.